Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about friction and braking. Let's imagine you're driving along the road and suddenly a cat passes, a cat passes in front of you. Obviously you start to brake as soon as possible. Now today we're going to see uh, what factors will affect the probability that you hit or not hit that cat. That will include your reaction time, that will include your speed obviously, that will include also how in shape your car is. The first factor you have to take into account is what we call thinking distance. Now, as soon as you see the cat, you start thinking, okay, I need to stop. But there is an amount of time between when you actually see the object and you start doing something, namely pressing the brake pedal, during which your car is still going at exactly the same speed. Now that amount of time is called reaction or thinking time and the distance that is covered by your car as it travels at the same speed while your mind and your body are reacting to that visual input is called thinking distance. So that is how far the car travels before you actually start braking. And that by using our usual, you know, uh, the magic triangle that links distance, speed and time, we can easily see that distance is equal to the speed times the time, where V is the speed of your car and T is what I called previously the thinking or reaction time. Now reaction time can be affected by a lot of factors. The most common ones are how awake you are. So if you're tired, your reaction time will become bigger. Your, your reactions are slower. Your reaction time increases also when you're distracted. For instance, if you're texting someone or your cell phone or you're talking with someone or looking around. So every time you're distracted by something, your reaction time increases. And finally, your reaction time increases if you're under the influence of drugs, alcohol, etc. All these factors will increase by bigger or small amount your reaction time. Therefore, they will increase your thinking distance. Okay, at, at this point you have reacted. You're starting to apply uh, the brakes on your car. So the car is slowing down and eventually will stop. Now the distance covered in the second part of the movement of your car is called the braking distance. So that is the distance how far your car travels as soon as you start braking until the car stops. And there are obvious factors that affect your braking distance. The most important one is your speed. The higher your initial speed, the longer it will take your car to slow down. And that is again why we have speed limits. Also, it's affected by the state of the road. If the road is wet or even icy, the braking distance will be bigger. Finally, it will depend also on the state of your car, and namely how well in shape your tires are and how good your brakes are. So these are all things that are going to affect, make your braking distance longer or shorter. So now let's put these two distances together. If we're going to graph the speed time of a car which is first 
you have a cat, let's say the cat in front of you, so you're reacting to the fact there is a cat in front of you, and then you start breaking. If you represent that in a graph, this is how more or less it will look like. At the beginning, when you're still reacting, the car is going at exactly the same speed. So this is what happens to your reaction or thinking time. Then you start to apply your brakes, and let's assume that that will affect with a constant deceleration your car until it stops. So, and this will be the braking time. Together, we call this stopping time. And related to that, we have a stopping distance. If you have a graph like this, it's very easy to find the stopping distance. Because again, remember, the uh, distance can be derived from a speed time graph by looking at the area under the graph. So, this area will be the thinking distance, this area will be the braking distance, and these two summed together will be the stopping distance. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the factors that affect the thinking distance and the braking distance. Our next and last lesson, and actually will be on a new unit about forces and pressure, will be about turning forces. So what happens when a force is not pushing or pulling, but is making an object go around a point?